Cool. Yeah, we're here to talk about uh, user user centered observability. Um, so my name is Mark Meyer. I'm the product manager for K6 and Synthetics here at Grafana Labs. And one of my favorite places to go is the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York. Top picture there is Avalanche Lake, about three miles in. Beautiful place, place to be. Looks nice, Mark. And uh, my name is Elliot Kirk. I am also uh, I'm a senior software engineer here at Grafana Labs, working on front-end observability and all things related to that. And something I like to do is this weird sport called highlining. It takes me to beautiful places, beautiful views. And uh, yeah, talk to me about it off stage. It's pretty cool. Thanks. All right, so our agenda for today. Um, last session, only going to take about three hours to get through. I'm going to talk about the user experience and how critical it is. I'm going to talk about some of the user-centric solutions we have here at Grafana Labs, uh, give you a demo, and then time for some Q&A. And let's start off very uncontroversially. The end user experience is critical. And this makes sense, right? Because the, the customer experience in the end is really everything. If customers aren't able to complete the thing that they're trying to use your app or service for, they get annoyed, they make noise on social media, they call into support. This pain flows into engineering where we're responding to incidents, we're losing revenue, we're firefighting, we're doing all those painful things. So if customers are happy, we're generally all happy. And this comes down to that humans are impatient, right? In less than one second, customers start to get annoyed. You've probably heard of these studies. Uh, Amazon did this, it was like 17 years ago at this point. 100 milliseconds of latency, uh, they calculated, cost them 1% of sales. And on a similar note, Google found that, hey, half second longer in uh, search result generation, they were losing 20% of traffic. And Google wants all that, that traffic. Uh, that's, that's a lot. And we're impatient. We don't want those slow experiences. So it's critical to understand what the end user goes through. You may have heard of the performance golden rule. Uh, Steve, Souders famous, Steve Souders famously once said, 80 to 90% of the end user response time is spent on the front end. Start there. We agree. We have solutions like real user monitoring and browser-based synthetics to help you understand this. Within the K6 group, which I've been a part of for years now, we always like to flip this, where once the back end is saturated, if you don't have a front end to deliver, there's no front end. You can't render everything. So all that said, many variables go into this, this end user experience, and it's important to handle it across the entire stack. Oh, shoot. Can you, you silence that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I would love to, but I'm getting Paige from Grafana on call. Apparently, that thing that we just rolled out is, is breaking, and now I'm, I'm getting Paige by support. In the middle of the last session of OBSCON. Yeah, it seems a little fitting, though, because, you know, I have been talking about setting up real user monitoring for a little while now, so yeah. I'm just going to go and take care of this really quickly. All right. Well, uh... Good thing you have me for the next two hours and 55 minutes. Uh, we'll get through this. So all these solutions get overwhelming. Where do we start? Uh, I, I think I know where we should start on this one. Of course you do. Yeah, I think I know where we should start. Uh, I think we should start by picking the low-hanging fruit that is real user monitoring. All right. And why should we start there? Yeah, so we built a solution that is super low overhead, super developer friendly. Uh, basically, just copy and paste a snippet into your application, and you're good to go. Okay, and it's like, how, how does this work then? How, is this snippet going to help me? Yeah, so we built a open source JavaScript agent that you embed into your web applications, and it automatically starts to collect real user monitoring telemetry data and send it to your data sources in the cloud. So what you're trying to tell me is that if my users are experiencing like little JavaScript gremlins running around the page while they're browsing, it'll let me know. Yeah, JavaScript gremlins, uh, monitor your web application performance, discover your front end errors, and track user behavior. Pretty much all seamlessly out of the box. Out of the box. Yep. So let's turn this around. You know a lot about synthetics, allegedly. Um, why do we need this if we already have real user monitoring? So real users are great, but they're not always completing the, the, the workflows you might care about. Um, it's also not proactive. You have to wait for a user to, to run into that gremlin. Right, but we have a lot of workflows. That sounds like a lot of work for me. Like, how do we justify that? 
Right. So I would say focus on the critical ones, right? You don't want to put it on every workflow. There are a ton of use cases. So I like to think of it as you want an integration test in production. For example, maybe we have customers that need to update a credit card. They don't do that every day, but you want to keep track of that. They can update a credit card so that they can pay you, do the thing that they need to do. Okay. So if it's just these critical workflows, I like that. That sounds solid and it keeps us safe. Exactly. So you can detect slippage or failures on those critical flows. Okay. So here's another one. Uh, Performance testing. Why do I need that as an engineer? So it's pretty disrupting to get paged, right? It can be, but my code doesn't break in production. You just ran off stage. That's something else. That was something else. Of course it was. Um, Right. Performance testing, it's it's meant to be proactive and done in in pre-production. As we develop modern systems, we should embrace failure as a good thing. We want to fail early and fail often. I mean, developers are already maintaining delivery pipelines usually. You usually have other tests that you're writing. So within K6, we say write unit tests, but for performance. And the sooner and faster you can find those issues... The, the, the faster you can fix those defects before it gets to customers. And you know what this all reminds me of? Hmm. The Swiss cheese model. Okay. Swiss cheese, not quite following yet, but let's see where you go with this one. Right. So this is t- <laughs> typically a, a theory used in like threat assessment. But in our case, we want to um, add these layers, in our case, the different ways to understand the user experience so that fewer issues actually get through since the holes aren't always going to, to line up. And logically, we'd say start with real user monitoring. As you just said, it's the easiest to set up. I bet you're going to show me how easy it is to set up. I might just do that. that. Ooh, that's, a, that's a tease. Um, next, let's move to synthetic monitoring so we can keep track of those critical workflows, those integration tests in production. Then finally, once we're sure that production is safe, our customers are, are doing well, let's shift left from reactive to proactive by by doing some performance testing. And of course, Grafana has solutions for all of these things, front-end observability, synthetics, and of course, K6. And now, let's do a demo. Sounds like demo time. So if we could switch it over here. Um, So just for some background here, we're gonna be using this demo. Um, This is the Open Telemetry Telescope Store. Uh, Customers come here to buy telescopes and telescope accessories. So any kind of impact to this page is obviously going to impact the business's bottom dollar. And we don't want that. So while I was off stage there, I just quickly uh, instrumented this application so I can show you all how it works. And let's just dive right in. So this is Grafana uh, Cloud Front-End Observability. And if we click into this application here, we can take a look at the the default out-of-the-box view that you get um, for instrumenting an app. Up here at the top, you have some key performance indicators like page loads, time to first byte, largest contentful paint, basically measures of how quickly your website is loading. Um, Then we have some visualizations regarding page loads and errors, as well as other ways to visualize the same data. But the real juicy stuff on this page is this error count over here, and that is looking much higher than what I checked earlier. So let's take a look at the errors tab so we can get more detail. So you get another dashboard out of the box here, similar visualizations, but you also get some tables that break down your errors in useful ways, like the most common error you're looking at, errors by uh, URL, errors by browser, et cetera. And based on the page that I just got, it seemed like something was breaking in the checkout. So I'm going to click this to filter down to the cart. And yeah, this order not visible enough, that is definitely new and seems kind of concerning. It's obviously been trending up. It's probably why I got paged. So let's get a little more detail about this error here. So now we're looking at error details, and this gives you all of the attributes um, of a given error, things like the error message, stack trace, as well as all the other various attributes that are captured by the Faro Web SDK. Um, Looking at some of these details here, checkout form, that tracks based on what I just saw. So that's probably going to be the beginning of my investigation, taking a look at what we've changed there. So I want to get some more information about the session and the kind of steps leading up to this error, just to help with my investigation. So I've got a link here to the session ID. I'm going to click into that. And now we've got another, you know, 
familiar looking view that you may have seen. We've got some information about the, the session, some of the additional KPIs specific to this session, and then down here, a user journey. So this is all of the telemetry data that's being collected um, as the user is using your application and uh, specific to this session here. So I'm gonna switch the sorting here so I can look at some of the latest events and there it is, our order not visible enough. So this seems pretty critical. You know, it's right there at the end of my user journey. Um, people are probably trying to check out, buy some stuff and uh, we're not being able to do that. So we gotta, we gotta deal with that soon. Additionally, I've also got traces here uh, for any traces that may be captured by the web SDK. You can click into one of these you know, view the traces right here in line uh, just to aid with your investigation. So to sort of close the loop on my whole investigation journey here, I'm gonna go into our other view, the error awareness view, where you're able to break down errors and aggregate them. And if we had multiple apps in here, you could see different apps, um, click in to get some more detail. But for now, I'm just gonna add this uh, order not visible enough to my watch list just so I can monitor how that goes in the future as we fix it. So you're probably wondering, how do I get this all set up? This looks awesome, I wanna use it right now. So let's head back into the application view, uh, go to Web SDK configuration, and you get this nice and easy snippet, copy and paste, put it into your application, and it automatically starts sending all of your data to the cloud. It's really that simple, it's great. So that is Grafana Cloud front-end observability. I'm gonna pass it back to Mark to show us how synthetics works. You set all that up all running that way? It was quick, I'm telling you, it's Ow. fast. It's Ow. great. I'm impressed. All right, let's talk about Grafana Cloud synthetics. So this is Grafana Cloud synthetics and, and I've filtered this down for review and I've set up a synthetic monitoring check using a multi-HTTP check. Um, this is, and, and immediately from here, I have a few metrics, uptime, reachability, and latency. Uptime is, hey, is this thing available from any of my probes? Well, reachability will, will give us a measure of uh, if there's any failures on any of those individual probes. Let's go into, this is already set up. I also set it up while um, Elliot ran off stage. Um, like I said, multi-HTTP checks. This is a, a new type of check. It's based on K6 under the hood. It's currently in public preview, as you can see up at the top. So you can use it now if you use Grafana Cloud. And we give it a, the Java name. We, we set the probe locations. We're gonna set a frequency. And this check, it makes two requests. We're gonna request this product endpoint. And from this product endpoint, I want to extract something from the response. From the, the JSON path, I want a product ID. And I'm gonna use that product ID in my next request to a recommendations endpoint. This is maybe the endpoint I'm responsible for. Uh, it's like the, the best recommendations we can give based off of what you're, you're looking at. And I pass as a query parameter that variable with our product ID, and I will run an assert to make sure that the JSON path is, is is there, that we get something back in the response. We wanna give those recommendations. And of course, we could save this, test the check, and set it up to run. And then we have this dashboard. Uh, this check's been running for a few weeks now, but we have the last six hours, and we can see how it's been performing. We have details like um, uptime reachability, which we just had, duration by probe, latency. We can switch between the individual HTTP requests in our specific check, and then we could even maybe zoom in on an error and then look for, hey, there's a failure right there. What happened? Hey, we're checking if that JSON path exists. It doesn't exist. So now what? I, I've done this synthetic check. I see that I have this error that's popping up on occasion. Uh, maybe I want to go and run some tests to see where that's coming from and if I can recreate that. So let me jump over to VS Code here. And this is a K6 test script and tests that same open telemetry demo site that we have. We won't go through the script line by line even though we do have a lot of time left. Um, We'll just talk about the major parts. When we built K6, we wanted to focus on the developer experience. So we took some opinions uh, to the product. We wanted everything as code. We wanted it to be a, a open source CLI that you could use and fit naturally into the, the developer workflow. 
So this test script does two things, or this, yeah, th this test case does two things. We have a UI test, which will launch a real browser using K6 browser. And I'm just going to loop over some things. And then I'm going to also hammer things on the protocol level. Um, as Matt said, we, we want to make a lot of requests. So our protocol function is just going to make requests to our recommendation endpoint, inserting a random product ID and random session ID. And then our browser function will load a page, navigate through the page, and we're just going to check to make sure those items are, those things are present when, when running. And I could, if I wanted to run this locally, I could do Kasix run and the name of our test script. Or since I'll use the cloud, I will do Kasix cloud and start that test. So what Kasix does now is it looks for any dependencies in our test script, bundles it up to an archive, into an archive, sends it to our cloud, and then we will distribute that test. And this should get running in a few moments, but to speed things up, let's jump over to another test I ran earlier today. So this is the this is Grafana Cloud K6. We have our, our test results here. And right at the top, I have the first hints and details of, hey, what's going on in my performance test? I, I want to use this to understand and look for signals of, is anything going wrong? Do I have bad patterns that, that I need to investigate further? Performance testing is really good at telling you if something is broken or not. And then you want to do root cause analysis afterwards. So we have four metrics in here, virtual users, request rate, response time, and failure rate. We see no failures, which is good. But we do see a, a rising, a, a jaggedy request rate, and then a response time that isn't trending flat. We, we really wanted that response time to trend flat to say, hey, this is stable while we sustain this load. Since I also ran a browser with, with this test, we also have this view of browser metrics. And we can see right at the start, hey, the, some of our web vitals were, were really high. And then we recovered. and. Again, doing some some wonky things. We can see interaction in X Paint is is kind of in a, a danger zone there. That's that's interesting. What's causing that? We probably want to go go investigate. Scrolling down some more, um, we can get to the the tables of all the metrics generated by K6 during this test, both browser and protocol level. Uh, if we set thresholds or checks, they would show up. But we can maybe just go right to the HTTP tab and we can click on a metric here. And we can see how that trends over time. There's only one, one request on the protocol level here, so it looks kind of like our graph from above. Um, but we can see all the different response time metrics, P95, 99 maximum. And what's really nice about this here is uh, I propagated traces in this test. And we, we have an integration with Grafana Cloud Traces. So I can view traces from this particular test right in context of what I'm testing. And I can maybe come here to this top get request. Again, we see some different metrics for the, the duration. And then dig into the span duration and even have access to exemplars that I could query with, with tempo and dig in further. Scrolling back up, I uh, won't go too deep into that. But if we want to do other comparisons, maybe against another test run, we could overlay those test results. Right. So. In summary, we saw Grafana front-end observability uh, in action. It helped us catch some errors. Uh, we were able to see them quickly and, and dig into that. We saw what Grafana synthetics, synthetics could do to give us signals if something was failing, where we might want to investigate. And then finally, I hope you saw with K6 how we could use that to performance test that same system so we could gain confidence before we release things to customers.